It's Miss Seashell. And Mr. E. You can see him in there. Uh, this is our next edition of Foo Ventures. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really happy today to be showing you our owl, owl aviary. Um, we started off with Wahoohoo outside. But we have a wild visitor above us in a tree, and um, we just thought it was giving Wahoo a little bit of agitation, so we put her back inside the aviary. So Mystery is going to be talking with us about Wahoohoo from inside of her exhibit. She's so, going to be talking to you too. Yeah. So yeah, she's talking to you. So remember to type in your questions. All questions are great questions. Say hi to us. Um, we're really happy that you joined us again today, and hope you're being um, happy and safe and learning a lot in your homeschool environment. Yeah. So we're at what? Episode five, maybe six. Six. Oh my gosh! This yeah. Time is flying by, right? Yeah. So we have our owl aviary today, um, and we've got Wahoo, like we said before, and she is a barred owl, not a barn owl. That's probably the biggest confusion that we get with them. So barred owls have bars on their chest. She's giving you a little wave. The lower part of her chest, from the half down, are barred, and then the upper part are striped. Right. So you got to know your more uh, your terminology. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Bella. This is Lucy and Bella's favorite animal. Yeah. Right. Besides the wolves. Yeah. She's obviously, a good girl. they have they have to come see her every time they're here. Um, so she's saying hi to you. Yeah. And those stripes and bars help to give her camouflage so they can blend in. You guys probably know the name for a nighttime humped hunter. Maybe you can type that in. Tell us all about our owls being nighttime hunters. There's a special scientific word for that we like to use. Type that in in the comments. We are really, really, really lucky. You're fine. You're fine. This is her favorite perch. You can sit on the perch. That's fine. Yeah. And we're going to give her a little bit of space. She's a little bit agitated, a little bit of poopy. Um, we think about her as being a very, very, very uh, social animal with some of the other owls around here, um, but she's never outside of her enclosure. So we have her inside of here because we've heard that other owl talking back to her. So we're going to calm her down a little bit, get her on her favorite perch. Hopefully she relaxes down. If she does do what's called a bait or moves away from the hand, it may look scary to you, but she's perfectly safe. It's under control because of the leash. We had leashes on birds of prey and owls before we ever had them on dogs and cats, believe it or not. So very, very safe that we have her connected or harnessed here. With her. I want to say hi to Brooke. Hi, Grayson. Hi, Donna. Um, Eric, there's some folks out there that want to say hi to you. Eric's parents. Mom, Dad. Greg and Marsha. Greg and Hello. Marcia. Illinois. Um, so she's off of her leash now. Um, so Wahoohoo is she still has her little swivel on so Eric's gonna take the swivel off. Alright, so she's gonna be a freeform owl in this exhibit for this edition of Foo Ventures. We'll talk talk to you all about it. So we got some questions coming in. Um, Michelle said they're nocturnal. Good job, Michelle. This is a nocturnal raptor. We're gonna come back to raptors. We talked about that with our eagle show. Um, so we're gonna revisit that. Um, Jenny wants to know how far can they turn their heads, Mr. E? Ooh, did we get the puppet? We do. Oh, 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 um, I had to hide it from her. She didn't like it. Oh, she didn't like it? No, but I'll bring it out for a second. Yeah, I'll hide it. I'll hide it. She's just really leery of uh, things that look real like this. So we have a, a puppet snowy owl. And so owls have a very flexible neck. They have lots of vertebrae in their neck. They have twice as many vertebrae as you and I. So they can swivel their head a little bit more freely. The eagles can too. Um, so her head can turn from straight uh, all the way back about to there. It's hard to do inside. And um, that's about 270 degrees. So all the way back around again. And, and the old timers would see them do that really fast from one side to the next. And they went, whoa, they just turned their head all the way around. But they didn't really, 270 degrees. So that's like 12 to about nine o'clock on a clock. Isabella and her Mimi, hello. And Theo and Cecilia, hello. Abby and Melissa, hello. Lillian, Lillaney and Ivy, how old? How old is Wahoohoo? Wow, this is one of the oldest 
besides we learned the eagle last week, um, animals at Oatland Island. Um, Wahoo, who is, was born probably around March of 1996. So now how much you do the math? 1996, go four years, that gives us to 2000, and then go 20 more years to 2020. So that makes her how old? Type in your answers. Um, so Wahoo, I'm gonna put the owl aside here so she doesn't freak out about it. Um, Wahoo is an, one of the oldest owls. She has been with us since she was a little fluffy baby um, owlet. So this is owlet season, friends. There are owlets that are falling, starting to fly, leaving the nests with their moms. They breed in the winter like the eagles do. Um, Tegan Delaney loves owls. Hi, Billy. Hi, Maddie. Hello, everybody. Um, did I finish? I finished the neck sort of, a, yeah, I did. Um, so owlets are being born, and they're, they're born already. They're about to fledge, leave the nest, follow their mom wherever they go. So, because um, she's going to teach them now how to be an owl. And all their lives sitting there, waiting for food to be shoved into their face. Now it's time to learn, where does that food come from? How do you kill it? She's, they're gonna watch every move. They're gonna follow her around. Um, so, you know, perhaps that owl up there, we don't know what her intentions were. Maybe she thought, well, who, who is her baby? Because well, who makes a lot of baby sounds inside of this exhibit? Why does she make baby sounds a lot, Eric, in this exhibit? So, uh, Wahoo's kind of basically frozen in, in chick mode or in, in fledgling mode. Um, she was imprinted on when she was very young, and so she didn't go to owl school. And owl school is this very important period of an owl's life. Basically, when they're about two or three months old, they go through this almost year-long process until their parents have another set of young where they're being taught how to hunt, where to find food, what predators um, to stay away from. So because she didn't go to owl school, she's basically frozen in that kind of fledgling mode. So she does little begging calls, um, like a baby owl would, which an adult owl will never do. Well, so Audrey has a similar question. She wanted to know, and we'll come back to Cecilia and Lucy's questions. Um, she wants to know, what do you do if you find a baby? Okay, so baby owls are always going to be watched over by their parents. Their parents are very, very good parents. They're always watching. That doesn't mean they're going to fight off a human because you're a big scary monster. So if you grab up an owl, it's likely that the parent is actually watching you do that. And that baby owl is going to be on the ground sometimes because as they're learning to fly, just like we do face plants when we're learning to fly, sometimes they don't get it right the first time and they'll land on the ground and they'll be on the ground. And you can kind of grab that baby owl up and think, oh, it's an injured orphan baby owl. But a lot of times the nest is nearby, the parents are watching it. So we recommend that you always keep an eye on an owl. If you want to help it out, you can give it space so that the mom and dad will come down and give it food or possibly even uh, give it a watchful eye, protect it as it climbs up into a tree through a bush or maybe straight up the side of a tree, which owls can do, which is pretty crazy to think about. They're sharp talent. She's, oh. she's giving us a show. Okay, so hi Rhonda. How are you today? Hope you're having a good day mm. off. Madison, hello, Allie and Abby, and hello Maisie. Nice and thanks to everybody out there who joined us today. Um, we're really excited that you joined our next edition of Food Ventures. Delaney wants to say Wahoohoo is beautiful. We think so too. Yeah. She is beautiful. Even when she's ornery, yeah. she's still beautiful. Yeah, and she's her. just coming off of a period where she was actually kind of thinking about being a mom. So she gets programmed just like every animal does, every bird does, to lay eggs, right? And so she's programmed to lay eggs and she lays an egg every year. The egg's never viable, so the baby's never gonna come for it, just like a chicken egg that you get at the store. Lays that egg, gets on it, incubates it. At a certain time, we pull that egg away and she has to go through that process of feeling like, oh, I don't have a baby this year. So she's kind of a little, little ornery and we let our animals decide if they want to be on display if they want to be in a program she didn't really feel like it today and we understand that so we gave her her space and now she's perched up watching us um making sure we're not doing anything crazy out there before i forget was it audrey that had the question about how much how much does she weigh ashley i'm oh, sorry ashley we were trying to get miss your question um how much do you think she weighs eric because i i have so a her. i would say that wahoo is probably just over a pound 
pound and a half maybe. Um, she's very light. Think about like a, a, a 16 ounce soda is kind of how much she weighs, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, she's all feathers basically. If you took all the feathers away from an owl, they'd be a set of really long legs, some pretty spindly arms, and then a little bit of a big fluffy chest, and a head that's even smaller than this. So this is a great horned owl skull, and her head would be almost two thirds the size of this skull. So. Okay, so um, we want you guys to do something for us right now. If you have visited Oatland Island Wildlife Center before and seen our owls, give us a thumbs up right now. Oh yeah. Send us a thumbs up. And then, hi Christopher, hi Iris and Lanier. Thanks for joining us today. Super glad you guys all are tuning in to Foo Ventures, the owl edition. All questions owls. It doesn't have to just be about barred owl because we are going to bring out another owl in just a few seconds. Um, or a minute or so. Yeah. Um, Lucy wants to know how far is a barred owl's territory? Yeah. Good question, Lucy. Yeah, so territories are always around a body of water. They like wetland areas. They like to be around ponds and rivers. So they're gonna move around quite a bit in that area, but it's not very large. So even an individual neighborhood could have several pairs of barred owls in that neighborhood. Um, think about maybe, um, you know, several football fields squared out. That's probably their territory. As long as they have food in that territory, they're not gonna move outside of it. They're not gonna waste energy going on a vacation or something like that. Okay, um, good questions y'all coming in really fast. Someone wants to know, does she like it, Miss, Miss Seashell or Mr. E better? I would definitely <laughs> say Mr. E better. She doesn't like me. Even when I come around with a program in the class and I put them in front, she puffs up, she gets real big. She's like, lady, I'm not going to work today. Go away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I and think um, she, she, I think she associates maybe better with boys yeah. because of the person that helped take care of her when she was really just a little owlet. Yeah. So it was a male. So I, yeah. that's my theory. Yeah, I'm not she, sure. I think she likes boys a little bit. I think she likes boys a little more. Um, so good question. Cecilia, how do they fly? Ooh, so Ooh. owls or birds, birds have hollow bones, helps them be light. Mm -hmm. Feathers are uh, modified scales going thousands and hundreds of thousands of years back to yeah. our, our dinosaur ancestry. Um, and they make them light and uh, gives them a little bit of lift. Their primary feathers help them fly. Yeah. Um, and she actually doesn't usually, she's a, they'll um, do a lot of gliding. So they'll flap, flap and they'll glide to a new branch. Yeah. They're not huge flyers. They'll um, stay in a, an old wooded forest area such as Oatland Island Wildlife Center and um, kind of go from tree to tree, yeah. branch to branch. They are sit, perch, and listen, and, and watch, and, um, and, and then stealth down and attack. Yeah, their bodies are built for, for glides, basically. They don't, they don't use their wings like flapping a lot like a songbird would. And Owl's um, question came from Lucy way back. Sorry, Lucy. She wanted to know where's Wahoo originally from. Um, she's a low country girl. Um, she was found on the Ogeechee River. And what uh, she, our theory is that she was a brancher. Brancher means she's bored of sitting in the nest and she's going to explore the tree she's in. And she fell out. And she fell into the river, but luckily it was low tide. But you know our titles of uh, rivers are really mucky. And she was stuck in the mud and a fisherman found her. So that's the story, and um, somewhere along the Geechee River, um, Walkington family in Hinesville. Hello, welcome, thank you. Ooh, we uh, have someone in Iowa. Uh, yeah, that's my cousin's kid, Spence. Spencer, um, we uh, we can hear owls probably up to a half a mile away, sometimes even farther. They are their calls are meant to kind of protect their territory and let other owls know to stay away, or in certain times of the year, come over here. Um, we'll talk about that maybe later. And Jenny, we're gonna go, we're skipping around a little bit. J uh, Jenny wants to know, are owls solitary? Yeah, so when they're raising their young, they're gonna raise it as a, as a, as a bonded pair, um, and they're gonna teach them as a bonded pair, um, but eventually they'll kind of break away from that bonded pair and spend maybe uh, the time when there's less food resources apart, so they're not using the same area to gather up food, they're not competing against each other, and then usually in about late December for the low country, uh, beginning of January, you'll start hearing them talking to each other and re-maintaining those, those new boundaries and such. Preening. She's preening, yeah. All right. She's cleaning. Um, so, so what Miranda wants to know, how fast is she? So oh, really so yeah, so owls um, are pretty fast, but not as fast as other birds of prey. They can go upwards of 35 to 40 miles an hour, is I think what I've read before about them. 
um, maybe even faster. Typically with birds of prey, their, their, their highest flight speed is not when they're flapping their wings, but actually when they're diving. So they're gonna gain altitude, they're gonna be up high on a perch, and they're gonna dive down to get to their prey quickly so their prey has less time to react. This is actually a good time to talk about why um, owls can do that and catch other prey so quickly. So, um, you want to? What do you want to be? Which um, one? I, what are we doing? Are we doing the yeah. feathers? Which one do you want to be? Um, I'll be. I'll be this one. Okay, I'll be this one. Okay, right. so Michelle is going to talk to you about owl feathers, and then we're going to do some demonstrating. Okay. And talk with you about Miss Seashell. Okay, so I have three types of feathers here, and um, only one of them looks like a flight, a primary feather, yeah. a flying feather. So we have some tail feathers here as, as well. But um, this owl feather in front of you, I'm going to walk a little bit closer. Notice how the edges of the top and around the side here have torn, looks like a piece of paper if you tear it and rip it, like tattered edges. Um, we call these fringes. These are fringed feathers. And do I have a better feather than this that I can show like a primary? A shark feather? A, a better, a, a primary feather. Another primary that's not an owl. Okay, red tail feather. All right. And then I'm going to show you this. It's a hawk, right? Red tail hawk feather. Look at the bottom of this one. Um, not the edges of this one. Not as tattered and torn as this owl feather. This is a special adaptation, good word, um, that allows owls to have a um, special characteristic called silent flight so they can sneak up on their prey so if you've ever been walking around at night um, or if you've ever seen an, a mouse in your house perhaps you see the mouse do you know what the first thing that mouse will do when it sees you it's not gonna run you're gonna sit there and you're like ah the mouse it's right there it's right there it's right there it's not moving the mouse is like because they think you can't see them if they move at night, they become visible because it's movement that she can see very well. She is looking for movement. So she's gonna be as quiet as she can, move her head all around, check all her environment around her, stealth, look for them, and then when she spots an owl, a mouse or a frog or something, she's going to swoop down without a sound and catch the prey. So Eric and I have two props in our hands that we're gonna simulate as feather edges, for edges of feathers. This um, feather edge is a little tattered. You see that, a little torn up? And then Eric's feather edge is not. So this is how it works, those fringes on the feathers. So Eric, why don't you act like you're an eagle and give us a, a flyby with an eagle flyby. Can you hear that out there in internet land on the interwebs? Hey, Leslie. Can y'all hear that? I okay, they hear it. I don't know if I can hear it or not. Dr. Right. Mayler. So that was like an eagle swooshing by, going after a mouse. Mouse is like, I hear that coming for a mile away and I'm out of there. But at night, when they're out stealthing around looking for seed, they hear a sound, they stop. The owl, now I got these torn edges. I got my keys for a Key jingle. <laughs> can you hear it? Okay, you can hear it just a tiny bit on my end because of these edges are getting um, tethered. Eric, why don't you try? So they can see that I'm just not as strong as you. What are you doing? I'm a glove on. Oh, six feet safe. <laughs> Hilarious. It's true. We are six feet safe most of the time. Thumbs up if you can hear it. Oh, I can't hear it. Okay, now a little bit. They can hear a little bit. You probably hear his tassel. Yeah, hearing this. Okay, so watch me. Don't be so early about it, Eric. All right. So, eagle feather makes sound. No fringes. Can you hear it? Thumbs up if you can hear. It, it works. It's <laughs> our workout of the day. It works. It's amazing. It's a super, super cool adaptation. It's found in owls um, and basically no other birds that we know of. So owls have this really amazing adaptation that gives you this really cool silent flight. And the silent flight that they have allows them to capture prey, but it also allows them to glide through the forest, 
grab up a new perch and keep them safe and sound when maybe another larger owl is around so they aren't predated on because a large uh, amount of kills for our larger owls actually come in the form of other birds um, when they're kind okay. of nesting. We have another owl to pull out. We do have lots of questions. We're gonna to try to come back and answer them after the stream because there's so many great questions. But we wanna pull out our next owl, see how it goes with a predator behind us. We'll see. Okay, stay tuned. So I can answer some questions while Michelle's grabbing them. What is her favorite food? She loves to eat rats. Um, rats and mice. Um, she gets it really easy. In the wild she'd be eating things with big strong bones. We give her, most of the time we give her stuff that's going to have much smaller, less developed bones so she doesn't have to break down all those bones in her body. So she gets uh, little rat puffs and meatballs that have vitamins in there for her. How many types of owl in Chatham County? Let me count them. Seven? Seven, maybe? Possible? Name them, Eric. So, <laughs> screech owl, barred owl, barn owl, great horned. Great horned owl, possibly, possibly long eared owl, right? You see uh, them over? Short eared owl. Short, short eared, sorry, short, short eared. During, during migration. During migration, short eared owls. We also sometimes, sometimes, sometimes have snowy owls even. That's crazy. Ooh, that There's snowy once. owls on Tybee Island like six years ago. That's crazy. Um, life or bird for me there. Um, and Those are there's flukes. one more. There's one more that comes through. Saw wet? Saw wet? No, they're more upper coastal plain. Or more up towards, not Chatham County. Not Chatham? No, they're in like upper coastal plain to Piedmont. Piedmont. Piedmont area. Um, like if you know it, type it in, or if you know it, let us know. Okay, so we're going to talk about Icarus. Icarus is not a baby owl. People like to think that. He is actually a, an eastern screech owl, full-size adult. Whew, how old? Um, Eric, uh, Heather, do you remember how old he is? He's probably, maybe, I want to say, I, I, if you know the well, answer, Leslie, you're out there. Tell us how old he is. Um, we supposed to look that up before we came but I forgot we were gathering so many props Ooh, we forgot all about nice that yeah, keep <laughs> an eye out out there okay so I I Eastern Screech Owl he is from Chatham County he is from Wilmington Island he came to us he's injured and I'm gonna walk closer again I want you to tell me what's wrong with him what is missing on this Raptor three things that Raptors have to have to make them special hunters Okay, so he's got his talons. His talons are good. Okay, he's a little nervous now. Wahoo well, made a little nervous. He's got his good eyes. Well, we don't know if he's got good eyesight. Probably doesn't. He's at least eight years old. I was gonna say nine. That was from Dr. Mailer. Yep, okay, he's at least eight years old. Um, and Diana, yes, he is missing his sharp curved beak. Mm -hmm. his, his fork is, or his toes, his knife is his beak, so he cannot cut his prey items into small pieces, but he wouldn't chew them anyway, he would swallow them whole. So now he is a special needs boy, he lives with us, we cut his food for him in small pieces. Just like you might get your meat cut by your mom or dad, we do that for him too. So, um, Sarah said he was a big hit at our birthday party. Good job. Yeah, yes. Sarah also had the, the right answer, correct answer as well, so good observation okay. skills on that. Um, pellets are really interesting things. Pellets are a um, way uh, for them to regurgitate or get rid of indigestible portions of their food. So they basically are going to puke up, which sounds pretty gross, but it's a natural thing for owls to do, a thing uh, that looks a little bit like a hairball, but it has also bone in it and feathers maybe, indigestible things, things that break down um, not as well, and they're gonna throw those back up and then they're gonna process everything out and pull the nutrients from it. P owl pellets can tell a lot to scientists about an owl and what they're eating and what their diet is, even in their range. So scientists study owl pellets and maybe you could st study owl pellets as well. There's kits online, you can order them, they come with all of the section guides, and identification of what mammalian 
pellets, uh, what mammalian species are inside those pellets, and also things like invertebrates sometimes too, fish scales, all things you can find inside of an owl pellet. I'm trying to block the view yeah. from Wahoohoo. Okay. <laughs> She's definitely giving us some nice background noise back there though. For the How long do owls live? The larger the owl, the longer they live. Um, that goes for most birds of prey as well. Um, so shorter lifespan with Icarus here. We're ha we'd happy for him to get into his teens in the wild, maybe eight to 10 years old. Um, but here in captivity, he doesn't have to worry about predators or anything like that. So he'll grow much older. Um, in the wild, a barred owl might get 20 years. That'd be crazy. Um, in captivity, maybe 30 years old. Um, so there's always exceptions to rules. Um, that's kind of the thing we hate about um, talking on camera too much about cut and dry facts um, because there's always exceptions and Google's right there um, to prove us wrong. But we try to do our best and give you age ranges. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you can go see the gray phase or not. Is it possible to move? Okay, we're going we're gonna to inch our, our way over here so we can move in front of the, our, our Screech Owl exhibit. And we're going to show you um, the different color morphs. Lucy wants to know how, who, how do they vary in color? Why do they vary in color in different species? Oh, that might have been about something else. But I'm yeah, going to show you okay. the, color, the color morphs here. So if you can see, can you see the gray phase back there? Um, and this is, Icarus is in the rufous or red phase, color phase. They're the same exact species. It doesn't make a male or female. It's just genetic diversity, genetic variety. Um, if you think about camouflage in the forest and you look through a forest, get close to a pine tree, look closely. They kind of have a reddish color bark. So he would look really, um, hide really well in that forest, to, mm -hmm. uh, pine forest. And then these guys would be better in a hardwood forest, uh, maybe more up north where there's more um, maples, um, ash oak trees, tree. oak trees. Um, and then this guy here down in the south where there's more pine forests. I, I think I read once that 50% uh, gray and 50% red form in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty divided. Yeah. Pretty equal. We're a pretty diverse state. Hey pretty Tim. State. Thanks for tuning in. Um, who do you want to Allison see? Allison McGee. Who? Nice who, to see. Who, Miss who, you guys who, too. Who do you want to see next week? Yeah. That's our question for you. Yeah. So type in your um, next week. We're going to we're gonna start at um, Wednesday and I think we're going to go start at 11 o'clock still. Um, we're also going to ask you if you wanted to tell us what times work best for you because we know it's kind of in the middle of the schooling day. Um, tell us that and we can uh, also maybe accommodate you. It doesn't have to be live when you tell us, just tell us on our Facebook page um, what time you would like to show the, air this show so we can uh, accommodate the most people possible. Uh, Mr. E and I are here um, pretty much Wednesday through Friday together. Yeah. Um, you, can't. Eight till when well, they're not going to be here at eight <laughs> <laughs> till four or thirty or five. So we can work in that time range there. Yeah, so, 10, 10 to four thirty ish. Yeah. Um, Michelle, can I tell my joke? Yes. Okay. Um, join us for next food food ventures because I will be there. <laughs> Who else will be? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. So um, thanks again for our food board members. Fabulous help, Maddie, Missy, Doug, Dawn, all of you that are helping us making this possible, bringing you live Oatland Island Wildlife Center. We miss you. We wish that you were here with us, but we will keep bringing you um, animals live as long as we can. Um, and then we have uh, questions that we didn't answer. We're really sorry. We will come back to you and we will answer them um, on the Facebook page from the forum. Yep. Okay. We'll get, I'll get on there and type some answers. Yeah, we're so glad you joined us today. Yeah. Hi, Icky. Icarus is glad. He's been missing people. Yeah, he's a grumpy boy, too. <laughs> All right, till next time, peace, be safe. Yeah. Six feet safe. Cheers, y'all. Wash your hands.